Hello everybody and welcome back to Retro For You. Today we're exploring the WEP 982 Mark III soldering station. Now I bought this with funds that are made from repairs etc because I feel like I need a new soldering station. Now this is a soldering iron and hot tweezers. It's supposed to be packed with features that promise precision and convenience. But does it live up to the hype? Let's unbox this test it and find out. So without further ado, let's crack on. So we're going to unbox this. We're going to check it out. We're going to look at other stuff we get. Now, this is a deluxe pack. Now, I did wake up very early on the 11th of the 11th to get in the sales and get this at a good price. I think I paid about £230 posted. I didn't get any import charges, so bonus. <coughs> and it arrived very quick. Within, within about seven days it got here, which is absolutely brilliant. It was bought from AliExpress and it was bought from the WEP store. So big thumbs up to them for the great delivery. Now, there is another one out there by Year How, which looks absolutely identical, but different coloured buttons. I presume they're both the same, made in the same factory. We're going to get this open, and we're going to have a look at it, see what quality it is. So I've got my knife, and we're going to slice it open. So here we have, and this is what it looks like. It's got the screen in the middle, the soldering iron here and the hot tweezers here what i do like about them at work i use jbc which is a hot tips that you can swap around now this will take jbc tips which is absolutely brilliant now jbc is a brilliant soldering station but it's a bit too pricey for my liking so this is the best i can get for my money and hopefully it will help somebody else who's looking for one similar so let's get this open this is the deluxe pack which has got a few extras apparently. So straight away we've got the operating instructions in English. Caution, follow the basic safety guides. So you can see here, tells you how to swap your tips, etc. Set your temperature, menu passwords. There's also free channels, etc. So at least it's in English, which is a bonus. Now here we've got actually get two handles but this is what was cool about these you see this here you can actually set your temperature from your handle now this feels quite good it's got the silicon leads so we've got two here we've got the bigger one and the smaller one now whether these work well they feel quite good so obviously you've got the two 10 tips here and we've got a nice selection here we've got a very fine one there we've got a wedge shaped one there and i think this should be a hook one yeah so these are the smaller ones for these ones here so that is absolutely brilliant that we've got them so we get six tips so far with these and for the bigger ones here, again, you've got the two, four, five. And you've got the wedge again. We've got the smaller one there, or slightly larger. And also the hook one there as well. So again, nice selection tips. And like I say, they've got long leads, which is good. The plugs look quite well made. They've got metal rings instead of the plastic fasteners, which is good again. So we'll just put that to one side, but so far I'm quite happy with that. So we'll take this off and have a look at the main unit. So here's, oh, so what else have we got here? We've got some solder, which is on a little like stand, which sits on top. So it's not bad, is it? Free solder. And here we have some precision soldering tips. Now these ones here are the 120s and these are for the tweezers. You see here, they're like a flat wedge type for grabbing hold of 
capacitors, etc. Now we are going to try these and see how good these are. I've removed some caps. I've got an Amiga 600 board here that's scrap. And these ones again are very similar again. They're more of a pointy. So them ones there are all for the... Oh, so we've got three sets. And these are more pointed ones that just basically point for getting smaller components like little hooks very hard to see here but i'll try to get some pictures up later so you can see the different types that we get so here's the main unit it's surprisingly light i thought it's going to be heavier also we got some little thermal couplings here i guess yeah and i guess these are the tweezers so we'll just get this main unit and box out of the way And here's the main unit. Now I'm used to my other unit is very, very heavy. Now, if you look here, the build quality doesn't look too bad. It's got all the buttons on the front. So you've got channel one, two, three for each side. So you can select different channels. This three temperature plus and minus. You've got auto calibration as well, which I guess are for under here. Yeah, there you go. It's already set up there. So that's the auto calibration. You've also got gauze in there, which is really good for cleaning your tip, as well as a sponge here. I don't generally use the sponges, I just use the gauze. And that's obviously for your tweezers. And this one is for your soldering iron. Now these here are for changing tips, but also storing tips in, so you can just pop them in and hot swap them. We've got a little Allen key here. But looking around it, looks quite nice. We're going to pull this off, which is something I like doing. Boom. And we're just going to put it together. Okay, to be honest, I was a bit concerned about these leaves lengths, but they're really good. They're really long, so that is really good. So, these seem to be okay, and because they're silicon as well, these should be fine. These look absolutely brilliant. Whether they're going to work brilliant, I don't know, but I do like these with the little tweezers and the flat edges. Should be ideal for grabbing components. So we're just about to turn this on. Now the power switch is on the side here. You can see, so we'll just turn that on. And you can see there, it's loaded in. Now, if you see on the screen here, there's this button here, and we can actually push the screen forwards and backwards, just in case you can't see. Let's have a look at these buttons. Now they're quite easy to read. You've got channel one to three there, and channel one to three for that side. Now these are to set your different temperatures so you can set the likes of 150 200 or 300 if you like it said for just for an example now they're both sleeping at 200 degrees it said you've also got your up and down here which for your temperatures on both sides a menu button here so here you have to hold the menu button so if you hold it you get the settings and you can select your buzzer on and off you can set it for degrees Fahrenheit you can lock it, you can select a password to stop people messing with it. Which is good when you've got kids around, basically. So now that's the menu button. You've also got auto calibration here. So what we're going to do, we're going to try this auto calibration. So I think you press this and it says select the temperature to 250. So we're going to just put this down 
In fact, we can use these buttons here, like I say. That's up, so we're just going to knock that down to 250. How easy is that, eh, using these buttons? And that is a great feature, which I do like. Now, the actual temperature is saying it is 279. So we're just going to let that stabilise at 250. We're going to move this cover here. And then there's a bit of solder there. I think what you've got to do is you've got to press this on for about three seconds. One, two three until it stabilizes and hold the auto calibration for about two seconds there you go calibration successful so now it's saying 250 actual temperature 250 now i haven't got another thermometer to test that unfortunately but we will try that on another video at the moment i'm impressed with the speed it heats up it's very similar to the JBC that I use way it heats up same as this side we'll take the tweezers out and straight away you can see the power going up there and then the power bar drops because it's actually warmed up and you can see there's actually started smoking so I don't want to touch them with my hands to prove that 300 degrees but I think they are so as far as the channels are concerned say I want to set a temperature for 350 I basically take this off I press channel 1 I set it to what I want. We'll use the buttons again on here. So we'll set that to 350, say. So you can see there the power came on. It's at 350. So that should be set on channel one now at 350. Hopefully. So what we'll do, we'll put that back down. We'll go to channel two which is set at 250 and we'll go back to channel one you can see there it's set at 350 so there's the temperature so that is really handy if you just want to quickly select different temperatures i'm very happy with this at the moment the build quality seems very good it's got the aluminium here to stop you burning the sides these are very similar to jbc as well where you've got like the rubber protection and you've got the copper in there which you can just clean your tips off you do have the sponges here if you require to use the sponges like i said before i never use these sponges but they are there as an optional accessory i do like the fact you can do the screen here now the cables the springs here are a good idea as well they always help keeping the cable up off the desk and away from the soldering irons the screen is really easy and clear to read, which is another bonus. So far, I'm very happy with this. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get a scrap Amiga 600 board. And we're going to try some desoldering and see how it goes. So this is my Amiga 600 board, which we're going to use for testing. Now it's a scrap board. We're going to see if we can move some of these surface mount caps. Also some of these caps here because you know we need to remove these caps all the while on Amigas. And that is why I wanted those tweezers to see how good it works. So let's hope it works well. So we've got some components here. Some small surface mounts which are usually a pain in the ass to remove. So we're just going to flux them up along this side. And we're going to see how it removes these components. So we'll get the tweezers. Well, they seem to heat up very quickly which is good again we're just going to see
are amazing. So I've given this a good test for today. For removing S and D components, it's absolutely brilliant and it's the best set of tweezers I've used myself personally. Now the soldering iron as well heats up very quick, as quick as my JBC at work, which is another bonus. And it seems to solder nicely as well. I can't comment on the tips because I've not had it long enough. This is the first time I've used it is on this video. Now the only thing I can say about it is it needs a counterweight in it or needs to be a heavier unit because when you push down on the back to insert your tip it tends to tip up so what I've had to find is you need to hold it with one hand while pushing the tip in so that's my tip for using this machine as far as value for money I think it is worth it I mean you could pay over 200 pound just for a good set of tweezers so to get the tweezers and the two sizes of solder tips as well because i've even got the micro ones as well which is really handy for when you're doing the smd stuff so that's another bonus the things i like about it mostly is of course this here to be able to change the temperature on the flight is absolutely brilliant and i can find that really useful especially when you're finding you've got a big earth track and you need a bit more heat to get through that especially with these old machines sometimes they've got massive earth tracks and they just take a lot of heat to actually desolder the things now like i said before i am not sponsored by these people in any way i actually chose this off my own back it seemed the best value for money at the time i couldn't find any others i did look for reviews on this but couldn't find many at all so hence why i thought i'd do one for you guys in case somebody else is looking for one as well and you think is this any good personally i think it's great especially for the money when you get the tweezers and all the tips etc but try to get it in a sale like i did then it's an even better price because at the moment on amazon the year how one is priced at i think 400 pound and that's a mark two i'm not sure the difference between the mark two and the mark three is but at the moment yeah it's quite expensive in the uk web delivered this very quickly from china so always check out aliexpress and check out their prices now if you're new here then please hit the like button also if you haven't done already hit that subscribe button because it helps the channel a lot i'm almost up to 1500 subscribers now which is unbelievable i didn't think i'd be there this soon so quick we're approaching two years old in january i think so we are getting quite an old channel now not really we're still a young channel now i have got a load of machines to look at now i did a major pickup the other day it was a careful literally a careful and i will be doing a video showing you some of the more interesting machines that are picked up so they will be coming on the channel over the next year i've got a load of work to do there's going to be loads of videos coming out please drop a comment down below even if it's hello check out my youtube buddies down below as well you got likes of captain commodore 8 bit retro refix joseph they all do great things we're all here to learn together and help each other as a community I mean that's what it's about in it youtube retro repair you learn things off each other you watch these videos and hopefully you learn more so on that note i shall see you next time on retro for you see you soon guys bye